All right. So. Well, hey, guys, I think we should go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes yeah, yeah, of yeah. this. There's definitely because, uh, uh, we're running a little low on time. So, um, to kind of preface it about what we're talking about, this, so Comic-Con and, you know, cons like this, it's always been, like, really great fan events, and, and you know, we, we do press and stuff around games, but, but folks like you buy our games, support us, even in the off years where we're not shipping, you know, DAI is, is doing their thing this year, you guys still come line up for our panels, and so we like to showcase stuff to the fans first before we do to anyone else, um, and we want to continue to kind of, kind of do that. Uh, Bioware as a whole, I think at this point, we want to pull back the curtain a little bit on some work in progress stuff as we go through to give you guys some more insight into it. Uh, but it is, it is work in progress stuff. We're years from, you know, like being able to say like, this is the exact game that we're making. And take this with a grain of salt in the sense that what you see here may not be the same thing that you see in the final game, but we want to showcase it anyway. So. Let us talk a little bit about the hero. Ooh. So, here are our male and female heroes that we've been working on. Um, you can see basically a slight change in stature between both of them. You see the red and the blue. That's, that's what we're thinking at for tintable options at this point in time. We haven't actually gone through an iconic color pass yet. You'll notice there's a couple things that are key about this character. The helmet, glass helmet, exploration, cloth. It's clearly not battle armor. You'll also notice N7, so our hero has something to do with N7. So the ability for us to bring this character into Frostbite has actually been, you know, pretty, pretty successful so far. And what you're seeing is pretty clear to what you actually see in the game at this point. Show you a turnaround for our male hero. So, um, as I kind of alluded to. It's, it's uh, a cloth-based kind of under armor there with armored pieces on top. Uh, the idea is that the character has free range of motion to do all sorts of great exploration activities um, in the game. As I mentioned before, that helmet allows you to basically use conversations and get into dialogues without you know, obstructing the face of the player. Also, from a purely operational standpoint, they can look around and see things a lot more easier than having a crash helmet your entire time. And here's the female, built at the same time, um, animated at the same time, so we're definitely working through the process together. Uh, obviously there's a helmet on, on both of them because we haven't yet got to the point we want to reveal faces. But the, the armor is, is pretty similar in terms of protection. We offer that environmental protection across whatever you might find. Um, it's a little bit more slender on the female. Uh, you'll, you'll notice there is that uh, there's no kind of front snap-on pieces on this version of the turnaround, where if we look back to the previous slide, I think the music might play again. So it's supposed to go backwards. Um, you see the, the pieces that are kind of snapped onto the front. That's currently what we're thinking about in terms of customization options for gameplay, for aesthetic, things like that. The color of the lights, those kind of things. We're all thinking about customization options there. And then if we go back to the turnaround, you'll notice that that's the stuff that's missing. We're also working on an Under Armour system where the, these pieces themselves don't necessarily have to be on the player at all times. So the, the razor that we're using is maximum customization for, for your visual aesthetic. Carl, do you have anything to add about you know, how it is bringing these folks to life? Um, the, uh, the character art team has been uh, putting a lot of effort in making those armors as uh, 
uh, realistic as possible in the sense that they could actually be built. Uh, so that's why the, uh, the Under Armour idea comes from. Uh, it also helps us get better deformation and the character looks much more real in game as well. Um, and the, uh, the idea of the snap-on pieces also gives us a lot of opportunities for customization, make uh, parts that could be animated separately and all that, and all that kind of stuff. So and it's working real well for us. Cool. All right. So <laughs> Isn't it glorious? So, the Mako is back. Yeah. yeah. But this isn't this isn't the, the Mako that you remember. This is a different Mako. So what you can assume from that, um, actually you can assume a lot. I'm not gonna talk about what you can assume, never mind. That's um, yeah, I mean, the point here is that it's a really uh, agile Mako. It's much different than the one that you've seen before. There's no cannon on it. There's no, well, maybe it can hover, maybe it can jump. I don't know. Um, we've had a lot of good help designing this. It's been through a lot of iteration. Um, yeah. I have a video that if I can bring up afterwards, it'll show you a little bit of the gameplay associated with the Mako as well, so that you can see how it is. Yeah, because we are actually making a game, not just pictures. It's really, <laughs> it's crazy. It's a text-based adventure. Yeah, it's actually a text-based adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we can, we can take some questions afterwards about, you know, what you guys might think. Uh, yeah, as many ending questions about ME3 as possible, probably, you know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mario Kart hop action there. Yeah. 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 So um, you saw a couple things in that video. Uh, most important that the Mako is is meant to be a fast response point to point vehicle at this point. It's something that you can tear around planets in really quick to get to where you need to go um, without a whole bunch of fuss. Now we're we're kind of working on the the tweaks and the physics and things like that. But the important point is that. You know, the Mako is going to be fundamental to the game. We're building a game that's about exploring places, and obviously exploring places needs a really, really handy vehicle. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good where we're at. We want continuous feedback. Um, I'm expecting them to hear from a lot of folks later on about their thoughts on that. In fact, we, we welcome it. 